to go to some faith preachers. I'm telling you, you don't realize how much you're going to really need the faith preachers until we get really closer. The closer we get to the rapture, you're going to realize the church, let me say this prophetically, the church is at the mercy of those who are preaching faith. We'll be at the mercy of the faith preacher. I'm telling you, you won't be able to get heaven to open without these preachers the closer we get to the rapture. I'm telling you, you mark my words, you write it down, glory be to God, it is going to happen, I promise you. All right? Now, and you can see that in Romans, the 10th chapter, Paul saying that what faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, but how can they hear what? Without a preacher. Well, how can the preacher preach except he be what? Sent. That's a type of anointing. Well, that's right after Paul just said, that is the word of faith, which what? We preach. We are preaching a word that already has an assurance of what God has already provided in it. That's good. And it's active. It works in your heart and in your mouth. Glory be to God. You've got to get it in your heart before it will come out your mouth. Now watch this. Now, let them not, for they are life, they're active, free-flowing, and to me, because I sought after them, I check right here. I'm looking on my screen right now. I went over to, um, I, I went over and I went back and referenced Romans in the sixth chapter. And then I went over to Proverbs chapter four. Then I went over to Second Corinthians, you know, and which I just clicked off my tab there. But at any rate, I went over to Second Corinthians, and I'm and I'm searching. And while I'm doing that the word starts to come alive in me. That's right. It, what it'll do is it'll start talking to you about your specific situation. Absolutely. It's God ministering to you. The Holy Spirit ministering revelation to you about your specific situation. You've got to have that to tap into the supernatural in that particular area. Now, the average Christian would prefer not to do this. Yeah. Flesh does not want to do that. It would rather just pray or dance or shout or fast to get the results. Yeah. It's like, man, I actually have to sit down. When it comes to counseling, whenever I have someone that is struggling with an addiction and so forth, particularly a believer, I know if it persists, I know this is the one thing they are not doing. Yep. It's impossible to continue to struggle if you do this. That's right. Because you're going to be become word of God minded yeah. in thinking. Absolutely. You're going to think how God thinks about this area. You're not going to think addiction. That's right. You're not going to think defeat. Because you're going to be overflowing with the realization that wow. Man, sin has absolutely no dominion over me. I am for real free. Did you hear me? I'm for real free. And then this is how you get on all of your Christian friends' nerves. Because yeah. a lot of your Christian friends are carnal. They're not word of God minded. So you come across deep, glory be to God. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you are deep. Sometimes you're too deep, glory be to God. And you need to, Brother Hagen said to us this past week, he said you need to, Relax a little bit. Glory be to God. You need to calm down and relax a little bit. Go have some fun. And you know, Sister Chelsea and I, we believe in that. Glory be to God. Now, watch this. For they are life unto those that find them, those who have sought after them by putting them in the eyes and the ears. Now, watch this. And health. Now, the word health right here. Is translated in the Greek here with Strong's as medicine. But let me give you the context of what kind of medicine. It is medicine that cures and restores spiritually, soulishly, physically, socially, and financially. Amen. Isn't that good news? Yes. It will, listen. I'm telling you, you could have been a full-blown crackhead, glory be to God. You could have been a full-blown pill junkie. You could have been a powderhead. You could have been a base head. And this word sought after in your eyes and in your ears will become alive to the point in your heart 
to where now you're walking in freedom and you can never tell that you were ever a junkie. Can't even tell, can't even look at you. That people will be able to look at you like, man, I don't believe you ever. I have people now that says, that say, Pastor, I can't imagine you ever using a drug. Well, I say, you may not be able to see what it happened, glory be to God, it was there. Uh, we put up a picture on our on uh, our ministry page and our personal page. Our personal page is used for ministry. Um, a lot of people try to message us and talk to us a lot on that, and we just don't. It's it's ministry. Even our personal page is still ministry. And uh, we put up a picture of a before and after. And if you look at the before and after picture of Chelsea and I, with before deliverance and, and present day, you can't even recognize that we're the same people. It's like somebody will have to tell you that that's us to really be able to recognize it. God will use medicine that will restore you to a place where it never, ever is visible that you struggled. I'm telling you, you, it'll look like you have never had a problem like you've been your good self your whole life. Glory right. to God. That's right. Woo be the lost weight, can't nobody ever even tell that you were 200 pounds overweight, glory be to God. Can't even find the stretch marks, glory be to God. All right, let me move, let me move, have mercy. Now, somebody's going to get that. Now watch this. Uh, it's health, now it's restore, it will restore you from whatever problem you had, but it will also bring a cure to any issue, and in this particular case, including your physical body, this is how you get healed. That's right. You go, you went out there, you were addicted. That I've met, I've sat down and counseled with multiple people that were addicted to prostitutes. Went out there and caught STDs, AIDS, so forth and so on. I'm telling you, you can use this word right here and get it in your heart, through your eyes and the ears, after having sought after it, and sought after it, and sought after it. You know what that is? That's meditation. That's biblical meditation. And that age will go away. Thousands and thousands of testimonies of people healed by of AIDS and all kind of incurable STDs by this word. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, um, now, do you some good to know that you know there is a, uh, there is a reciprocal as a result as the result of sin. Sin will bring forward death. It will bring forth consequences at some point if you do not judge yourself concerning it. Then it will really make a fool out of you. Particularly with preachers. Preachers, if you're a preacher, you're listening to this, you're going into ministry, there is no room for immorality in the ministry. None. None. When I say none, I mean none. You cannot preach with immorality. Particularly right now, the reaping season has sped up quicker than it has ever been in the existence of the kingdom of God. You will reap and you will reap quick. You will be found out. You'll be found out quick. Satan will destroy your life. You have to fix immorality issues before you step in the ministry. It is the disqualifier. Immorality is absolutely the disqualifier as it relates to the preaching, teaching, and mentoring to other people. They say how you can't live without it. The devil is a lie. Not only can you, you should be living without it. It should not be named among you at all, even as a Christian, let alone as a minister of the gospel. But if you've already fallen in that area, this is the way you get out of it. This is how you get out of it. I know what it is to be a young, struggling minister. I was there. I was the young, struggling minister that could not seem to get self-control. 
and I was so enough saved, I cried, I fasted, I begged, I pleaded, I went to every deliverance service there was, and I still struggled. I never knew this. I never knew that I could use the word, apply faith to it, and walk into freedom, because I never knew that I was already free. Nobody ever told me that I was already free. All the preachers, particularly in the holiness uh, churches, were always telling you that you need to go and get free. You're trying to get free. That is a lie. Yeah. You are already free if you've been born again. Right. Now, if you're not free, it's, it's because you're not born again. Mm. If you're absolutely, truthfully not free... That can only be the case if you've never been born again. In which case, it's okay. Now you got a reason. Now you have an explanation, glory be to God. Oh, this is why I'm, I'm struggling with drugs and a junkie, because I've not been born again. Now on the other side, you have been born again and you're struggling. It's because you don't have a revelation of the fact that you are already free and you're not appropriating it. And that's what this courses for to show you how to do that. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, I'm running out of time. Glory be to God, i got to move. Now, for they are life unto those that find them, or sought after them, health, medicine to all their flesh, restorative and cures to them spiritually, soulishly. What is your soul, by the way? What's your soul? Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Healing to that area of you. Sometimes, particularly when you come out of sexual sin, like uh, homosexuality and so forth and so on, you've got to learn some men, particularly men, or even women that were deep in homosexuality, and even after you stop the act of homosexuality, you need to meditate on this word, and it will take the effeminate attributes out of you. You see, there are certain men that have been, they've stopped the, uh, the homosexuality, and they are really living for the Lord, and they're not practicing any of that anymore, but they're still feminine. And people are hard on those kind of men in the church, and really hard on them, and, you know, almost put them in the category as though they're still in homosexuality, and those men don't even want to be that way, and they've been beat up so much, and they've somehow... Somebody has told them, hey, just be okay with you, and they've accepted it and said, you know what, this is just me. I may be a little bit feminine, but God loves me, and that is true. But I'm telling you, you can get this word in your eyes and the ears, and it can become active, and God can restore you in a way to where it looks like you never, ever did it. He can do it like you've never, ever struggled Go get this word active. Use this medicine. It will restore any abnormality. Right? That's a good word, isn't it? It's enough to make you run. Have mercy for run all by myself. You know, I, I saw a lot of, I come from a long line of very, uh, you guys heard me say this maybe, I come from a long line of uh, uh, serious men and women of God that love God that have exceptional reputation still to this day never even been accused of sin as become a saint never even been accused of spotless reputations in the body of Christ and uh, but and the stuff that I'm talking about right now I've never heard of it never ever ever heard of it and uh, if they heard of these things if, if they got this revelation They'd be running around like they're crazy. I tell you what, be jumping over chairs at 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. Glory be to God. All right, let me let me move on. Let me move on. Yeah. I, I was gonna say something else, but I'll strike that from the record. Glory to God. Now, uh, now look at this, verse 23. This is where it gets interesting. This is where it gets razzle dazzled. Nephew, you want to write this one down, okay? <laughs> This gets, this gets wonderful. Verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now, that word keep right, right here in the Hebrew is translated guard. Guard thy heart. Now, 
heart right here is your spirit, but heart right here in the context of what the writer is really bringing out right here also has to do with your soul, man, your thinking. Okay? Guard your heart and your thinking with all diligence. The word diligence right here in the Hebrew is translated prison facility. Wow. Did you get it? Yeah. Are you still here? Have you gone home? Guard your spirit man. How do you guard your spirit man? There are only two gates to it. Right. The eyes and the ears. Right. With or translated like a prison facility. Mm -hmm. Guard it like a prison. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Guard it like a prison. Why? For out of it. Ah. Out of what? So. The heart. Now, then we get back to the heart right here. Because what I'm about to talk about doesn't come out of the heart. It doesn't come out of the mind. The mind then affects the heart. And then the heart is going to do something. But for out of it, the heart, are the issues of life. King James just makes everything so super spiritual. Glory be to God. You got to go check. Now, issues. The word issues right here is translated the outpouring, the outgoing, the outflow. For out of your heart is the outpouring or the outflow of, watch this, that which was sought after, mm. that which was alive, mm. free-flowing, and active, wow. that I placed in there by putting it through my ears and my eyes. And that was the specific word of God that covers my situation. The specific word of victory. Isn't that good? Yeah. Now, you can see what Paul means when he says, what saith it? In Romans, the ninth chapter, the word is nigh thee. It's in thy mouth and in thy heart. What is? The word becomes active and ready to be used in the heart and ready for the mouth once this has been done. Once it's been deposited in the eyes and the ears and sought after till it has become active. Amen. Do you see that? Yeah. Now it's ready to be used is what Paul is picking up on right here, right? Now, you've got to guard this heart because now the issues or something is going to come out of your heart now. Now remember, we're still talking about the fact that sin has no dominion over you. We're still talking about the process of realizing your freedom. I'm telling you, I've ministered to people that right as I said this, they got it and never went back to sin again in that area. Believers. You don't need to wait for a special time. I used to think when I was young saying, you know, uh, I used to think I would dream about what that day that of my deliverance is going to look like. Is there going to be a ball out the sky? Am I going to get a chill from this side to this side? Is it going to hit me from the front? Is it going to hit me from the back or all around? Am I going to see a light? Is a special prophet going to pronounce my deliverance? Buffoonery is what it is. Buffoonery. You don't need all of that. All you need is faith in this word. You don't need no more touches. You don't need nobody else to lay hands on you concerning this if you're hearing this because this is the laying of hands right here. This is the sure word of prophecy. If you do it, it'll work for you. Amen. Now, if you don't, it won't, but I persuade it better of you, you're going to do it. Amen. Be God. Those of you that are watching this, this series for the first time, you are going to do it and you're going to realize that you've been free the whole time. Go yeah. be to God. Right. Now, watch this. For out of it are the outflowings of life. Look at this word, life. The word life right here is Hebrew. It's not Zoe. 
It means, are you ready for this? Maintenance. Mm -hmm. Out of your heart, when you have deposited this way, in revelatory form, maintenance is going to come out. <laughs> Sorry, for a this is amazing. This is absolutely, absolutely amazing to me. Maintenance is synonymous with the guarding of your heart right here. See, that word is going to become alive in you and it's ready to start coming out of you and it's going to protect and maintain your stand because at this point you've stood out. You've stepped out and taken the position to say, you know what? Sin has no dominion over me anymore. And at that point is when Satan is going to make you prove it. He's going to make you prove it with words, feelings, thoughts, pictures. Mm -hmm. That's another way of saying temptation. Mm -hmm. This is when you're going to start seeing the pornographic images hit you in your in, in pictures in your mind. Yep. This is when dreams are going to become so real for that soul tie that you had with that man that you were not married to that you were sleeping with and the soul tie is so strong in the dream it feels like he is physically there with you being intimate with you you see that the depression is so debilitating that it makes you feel like you can't get up the food the steak and the Oreos look better than they ever, ever looked before, glory be to God. Never knew the steak and the Oreos. You know, you was old when you eat both of them together. <laughs> glory to God. The alcohol or the, I mean, this is when you're walking down the street and every uh, opposite sex that you see seems to be crippling to you. See? After you've taken your stand that sin has no dominion over me, when this word is deposited in your heart in this way, it's going to begin to protect. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's going to protect your mind. It's going to protect your heart. That's right. And it is going to perform maintenance. It's going to keep you restored and bring you to a cure. That's good. Where you're going to end up in the reality that man... Devil, these thoughts, these feelings, these pictures, watch this, are lies. Yeah. Isn't that something? That's probably one of the most powerful revelations I ever got. Mm -hmm. That all temptation, I want you to write this part down. All temptation is a lie. Write that down, nephew. All temptation is out of time. <laughs> All temptation is a lie. That's right. Watch. The thought or the craving, listen, the actual craving is a lie. The dream is a lie. That's right. The picture. I mean, you know, at this point, you're getting pictures that you ain't never seen before. Glory be to God. Yes. You see, you're getting pictures of temptation that you never like. God, this, Lord, this is not even fair. A person should even be allowed to be tempted to be tempted this way. Wow. This is illegal. You, this can't be. It is a lie. Yes. But now, you've got to enforce your authority over that lie. Right. Now listen, this is so so important. You don't mind if I take a little bit longer, do you? A little breakdown video. Low, a little low. Now the picture or this authority cannot be enforced in the thought realm. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. This authority 
or this victory must be enforced and it cannot be enforced mentally alone. That's right. That means when I get the temptation, some of you have seen me do this, when it comes in my mind, I can't do this. When the picture of the opposite sex comes in my mind in a way that I never knew it, with the person that I was most recently with mm -hmm. two weeks ago, a month ago, a year ago, I can't do this. <clears throat> I can't do that. I can't get rid of it that way. I can't think it away. Now watch this. You can try it. And it's very common for believers that don't understand faith to try to fight it that way. And here's what it does. When you try to think it away, this is what the scripture is dealing with when you are fighting in your own strength. And what it will do is it will wear you all the way out. It will wear you out until you have no strength left to resist. That's really important. Because by the time you push one thought out of your head, another 20 is coming right behind it. Then 50. Then maybe a thousand. And then all it takes is for you to go to some religious preaching church that tells you the very fact that you're still being taught it like that means that you're not free. And you go right back into bondage. Devil is a lie. Temptation does not mean bondage. That's good. That's good. That's good. Temptation does not mean bondage. Nobody has been delivered from temptation.